Hello, everybody. Uh, great win. A total team effort. Excited for our team. Excited for the state of Louisiana. Excited for LSU, all the former players, all the former coaches. Everyone that's been involved and contributed to LSU. What a great day for, for LSU family. A total team effort. That's what it was going to take. Preparation, mindset, and confidence. Uh, we had it going into the week. We felt we were the better team the whole time. But we knew it was going to have to go out there and prove it, and we did. I thought our offensive line played phenomenal. James Craig has done a great job to see the transformation of our offensive line from one year to the next has been uh, been really remarkable. And uh, give him credit and give uh, Lloyd Cushenberry and Damon Lewis the leadership uh, that they've done with that offensive line. I'm very proud of them. The play of Clyde edwards alaire as we all know, was phenomenal. One of the best efforts I've ever seen a football player in my 35 years of coaching. And also Joe Burrow. Those guys were, were great on offense. On defense, Kilevon Chasson had his best game. Ten tackles, three tackles for loss. The interception that Patrick Queen uh, he got right before the half, helped us win the game, and the fumble, by, fumble recovered by Ray Thornton. I thought those was some good stuff. You know, but I'm talking to the team today. It's today's still a truth Monday. And... Uh, Although that we won a big game, uh, we didn't play our best for 60 minutes. I thought we played our best for the first half. Uh, some parts of the game we played well in the second half. Some parts of the game we didn't. And I'm going to challenge our guys to play their best for 60 minutes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, on the Ole Miss, uh, we're going to treat this week just like any other week. Uh, we're going to go through the process. Today's Tell the Truth Monday. We're going to enjoy the win. We're going to have a 24-hour rule. Then press on the Ole Miss. I'll tell you a little bit about them. Uh, first of all, they, they – um, they put this game on their calendar. This is the game that they want to win. Uh, this is a rivalry game uh, for them. They want to beat LSU. This is the team they would like to beat along with Mississippi State. And we know we're going to get their best shot. And they play great at home. It's going to be a great crowd. It'll be a great challenge for our football team. On offense, uh, they're a spread offense. Uh, they're, they're very, very difficult to stop on offense. They have an excellent running game, 247 yards Rushing per game, they're led by quarterback John Pumley, number 10, dual-threat quarterback, elusive runner, has almost 800 yards rushing, uh, second in the SEC in yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. Jerry on Early is a kid that we recruited, a dynamic runner, a dynamic back. Elijah Moore is their leading wide receiver. On defense, they are 3-4. They moved from a 4-3 to a 3-4. There's six returning starters. They're only giving up 24 points a game. 123 rushing, 274. Benito Jones is an excellent defensive lineman. I tried to recruit him and know him well. Sam Williams is a good rusher, has five sacks this year, and they're very solid on special teams. We're very proud of our football team, and we're happy for all the things that we've accomplished. But still, we've got to focus in on one game at a time. Uh, we have not by far reached our goal. Uh, there will be bigger games down the road for us to play in, and this is the biggest game we play in because it's our next opponent. Any questions? Ed, you mentioned the 24-hour rule. What have the last 24 hours been like for you and the team? Been great. Been great. You know, I went home with uh, Saturday night. Me and Kelly had a ham sandwich and some chips and watched sports. And I mean, <laughs> it was a great night. You know, but yesterday was good. Watching the film, everybody was really in a good mood. But after you watch the film, there's some things that we you know we're a competitive staff. There's some things that we need to get better at. Obviously, I can't wait to see the team today. I know they probably enjoyed. Uh, the last couple of days, and um, but it's time to get the business today, get to work. Coach, uh, sometimes when players say things, it seems like maybe they don't mean it, but your guys saying we haven't arrived, this is not our end goal, Joe Burrow, Rashard yeah. Lawrence, them say, it seems like they believe it. Do, yes. Do you, do you get that, that they believe. They believe that we're going to win all week. Uh, they know the uh, what we're shooting for. We don't talk about it, but, you know, and uh, – but we want to win. We want to win, and, and Ole Miss is in our way. And that's it. We want to win. Ed, right here in the middle. What was uh, Power Hour like Sunday night? Phenomenal. And, obvious, and obviously, you guys got a, a big commitment as well. Yeah, uh, phenomenal. Right. And uh, recruiting is going very well right now. Coaching staff and our support staff has done a phenomenal job. Uh, there's a lot of guys that want to come to LSU right now. We're going to have the best players coming to LSU. We're also in the 2021 class. Uh, there was a lot of players at that game, and uh, there will be a lot of players this week at the game. Uh, guys are coming to more and more watch us play and like what they see. It's been a great response on the phone. 
Ed, over here, a couple of things. Did, how much did you guys study the Clemson game that, mm -hmm. that Alabama played mm -hmm. against them mm -hmm. and glean anything from that? And two, uh, were you surprised at how much it seems like you really were able to create a lot of confusion with your formations? Were, were you surprised that you were able to be that effective doing mm -hmm. it? Uh, first of all, we did study Clemson. Uh, we did study Clemson in the summer extensively. I don't think we studied him that much last week. Uh, uh, we have confidence in our scheme, especially offensively. Uh, there were some things on that film that I've never seen before done to that, to that team. And was I surprised? I, I thought we could do it, but uh, we had to go out and execute it. I thought it was very well executed, especially the uh, when they had 11 seconds left, the play to, to Clyde. Uh, was a very difficult play to defend against that coverage. So I thought that uh, Coach Steve Ensminger and Joe Birdie had the right things called, and uh, they did a tremendous job against a very good defense and against a very good defensive coach. Coach over here. Uh, going back to recruiting for a second, you, you've talked a lot about wanting to recruit Louisiana, obviously mm -hmm. a, a ton in the past. Yep. Just what is your strategy with developing relationships with uh, high school programs around the state, and, yeah. and has it gotten easier to recruit in the state yeah. since you've been here? You know, we, we call high school coaches every Thursday, and uh, we have a high school coaches powwow every Thursday. We wish them good luck. I have their record in front of me. I know who they're playing. They love it. I, be, I believe we have a great, about as good a relationship with most high schools in the state since I've been here. Uh, they all pulling for us. Uh, they all text me. Uh, they're all in communication about recruiting. I've talked to several coaches this morning, some of the top players. So I think that we're doing a better job in the state of Louisiana than we ever have. Coach, yeah. uh, as a freshman, my first LSU game was 1977. Ensminger was the quarterback. Carlos <laughs> Carson caught five touchdowns. It was 77 to nothing. We never thought we'd see what we're seeing now, though, and I'm just curious because he was already here. Uh, we can't talk to him, but what is what is Steve saying about how this has been and his role in it? Uh, and what would you say about him, the conversations you're having and his role? About the job Steve is doing? Phenomenal. He's like our general in there. He's steady. Uh, Steve doesn't want any credit. Uh, Steve loves the LSU Tigers. i never forget the day that we hired him. I mean, we need him offensive coordinator, and he said, I'm going to do it. And people don't believe I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and he's doing it. And I think it was a great victory for him, uh, you know, coming back on – well, going on the plane, I, I told him how I felt. I felt that uh, we got our guns loaded. We're going to win this football game. I felt confident. And I told that to several coaches. And when we got back, there was, uh, I guess, several thousand fans at the airport. Where he said, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. So he's very proud, but he's humble. He's on the work today. You know, don't want any credit. Just go on the work. Let's go beat Ole Miss. Uh, you know, he's very mature, very smart. Uh, he's a team player. Uh, he's let Joe be involved as much as I've ever seen an offensive coordinator let a passing game coordinator be involved. Uh, very unselfish, much like our team. Yeah, Ed, uh, on the, the, the deep ball that Stingley got beat on, what happened? Because it looked like he, he turned to the sideline and got yeah, distracted. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, well, it was a good job on that part and uh, something that we have to cover. We, we had covered it, but we didn't cover it enough. What, what he did, he clapped and he looked over. Well, look over to change the play. So our guys look over to change the play. He clapped, he faked, looked over, and the guy ran a fade on him. That was not Derek's fault at all. Uh, that is something that we should have covered more with him and something we have to fix in our system. That was nowhere. He was doing what he was coached, so that's not his fault. i got to take the blame for that. Coach, you're right. Uh, obviously, the LSU-Alabama game has a lot of talk in the trenches, O-line, D-line. You all have watched the film. Uh, how do you feel like those two sides played? Phenomenal. I, I just I was so proud of our offensive line. Uh, the first play, we have a double team, a bump combo, and we won it. Uh, we won it very well, and I just felt, I felt those guys fought. They battled. They wasn't wasn't overwhelmed. I, I, obviously, Alabama made some plays. They, they they got a couple first round picks up there, but I thought our line fought. I was very proud of them. I felt like they didn't run the ball. They had 137 yards rushing on us, which is too much. But last year they had over 200. They ran the ball in between the tackles. We couldn't stop them. So I thought bo both sides of the line of scrimmage played very well, especially in the middle. Over here in the front, um, two-part question, but pretty simple. One, do you ever uh, 
get calls or inquiries from other people in coaching who maybe they their first big job didn't go as well as they had, had hoped, but they always believed if they got in the right circumstance, the mm -hmm. second chance it would go a yeah. lot better. And um, and the second part is just, do you, I'm sure you would have loved to have killed it in your first job, but do you like the kind of moral of your story about learning and sure. growing and, yeah. and you know having it? Sure. First of all, not many coaches call me. I don't know why. I, I, can't, I can't answer. But I don't call many coaches neither. I, I got my staff here, and those are the guys I talk to. I go and talk to Kelly and my kids, and that's about it. Uh, you know, Ole Miss was a great opportunity for me as a young coach. Uh, I wasn't that young, but it was my first job. Um, it was in the SEC. I learned a lot of things. I learned how to do things. I learned how not to do things. So I'm very appreciative of that job. I, I don't like the results. But you know what? It prepared me for down the road. To Coach Carroll told me, he said, you know, you're not going to figure out what type of coach you are until you're 50-51. I didn't want to believe that, but it just takes a while, especially when you get your butt beat. Uh, you're going to learn how to, how to get better. And uh, I do believe that that job trained me for the job that we're doing today. So I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of it. Ed, uh, from Saturday's game on third downs on defense, it looked like Caleb Vaughn Chason had one of his better games. What, what did you see from him there? And how effective did y'all approach you know, third yeah, downs? I, I do believe that Kellevon had one of his best games. He's healthy. Uh, we let him rush. We didn't stun him a bunch. We came around the edge. We gave him a free rush to go outside the tackle, inside the tackle. He made a great play on third down with the tackle pull. That was a big stop for him. And uh, I, I feel like he's coming into his own right now. Coach, you, you, uh, you kept Dave Miranda from Texas A&M. Um, are you confident you can keep Joe Brady from, from leaving? And what, what might that entail? You know, uh, you know this, this is Joe's first full-time job. And uh, I do believe he's very loyal to LSU. I do believe he likes what's going on at LSU. And obviously, we're going to compete to keep him. A guy like that is going to ha have opportunities, but we're going to compete as best as we can to keep him. All those things are going to happen after the season. Uh, we want, you know, Joe – Joe's worried about breaking down Ole Miss's coverages right now, so he, he's not even thinking about that stuff. But after the season, you know, we have coaches that, that, that are going to get uh, chances to go elsewhere, but the ones that we want to keep, we're going to fight like heck to keep them. Ed, uh, I saw a picture that people put signs in your yard congratulating you <laughs> after the game. Anybody ever put a for sale sign in your yard? Uh, no, I don't think they had the – to do that. <laughs> uh, anyway, to, to, to that end, you, you've seen both sides of yes. this. You know, you, you've, you've had the praise. You've had the criticism. Sure. The, you, know, whatever, every, you know everyone's loving you and your team right yeah. now. But does, does this help motivate you and drive you to know you're only as good as your last game, your last season? No question. No question. You've got to keep going. And, and uh, Pete Carroll told me this. Ed, don't read it. When you do well, Gonna make you too high. When you do low, it's gonna make you too low. You gotta stay in the middle. You gotta stay in the middle. So I just stay in the middle. Stay in the middle. And it's not about me. It's about our team. Uh, there's a lot of good things that have happened to us. We got Joe Brady. We got Joe Burrow. Uh, we got an excellent staff. Uh, this is this is just a culmination of a lot of hard work. You are. <coughs> You know, with six defensive backs, that's a lot on those third downs. Is that something that's pretty much made for something like Alabama, or is that something you could see yourself using more? Well, uh, you see them receivers there. <laughs> we could have put a 12 in it sometime. I don't know. But uh, that, was, that was some of the best receivers we've seen, so I think that's was part of it. Coach, what is your opinion on your players live streaming and things in your locker yeah. room after yeah, the game? Yeah, I wish that and... wouldn't happen. You know, that shouldn't happen. And I, I addressed the player that did it, and he felt bad about it. You know, and, you know those they they so used to having those phones on them all the time. I mean, I, we have pregame meal, and I said, okay, well, you turn your phones off just a little bit so we can say the prayer. <laughs> so we say the prayer, and boom, they're back on their phone. So, you know, I, I think that's just uh, the product of today. We all everybody carries their phone with them all the time. Uh, I don't think it was done with malintent or nothing like that. So I, I addressed it with uh, with the young man. I don't think it's happening. Again. And as far as what got out, a lot of people. A lot of your fans love it. Yeah. But then, I mean, what's your opinion on what got out? Well, you know, the things that I say outside um, to the media is uh, those are the things that I want to get out. And uh, if I wanted that to get out, I said that outside. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you get emotional. You talk to your team, it's your family, just like we all talk to our family. 
Uh, we talk around the dinner table, we say some things that, that's outside the family, we don't say. And it was no means to hurt anybody or nothing like that. It was just a fiery moment, a very emotional moment with our team. That's all that was. Coach over here, a couple of things. Number one, this happened in 2011, and then, of course, we know there was a, a rematch. How much have you cautioned your players about, you know, understanding that if things go the way you hope they go and the way they hope they go, yeah. this could happen again. Mm -hmm. and, and number two, after the game, I asked Jamar Chase about what the difference was. And he said, without a doubt, he just said two words, coaching, coaching. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of elaborate on that, please? Well, uh, yeah, this could happen again. Never can tell. Uh, the focus is going to be on Ole Miss. I think that uh, we have a mature enough team not to look down the road, and because uh, if we don't beat Ole Miss, it won't happen. And uh, so, I think that's our goal. So I won't talk to them about that much. And uh, but uh, I will talk to them about leaving alone after the day. Let it go, move forward. I do believe Jamar brings up a good point. I think that the the hiring of Joe Brady, going to the spread, uh, doing the things that we're doing on offense, the daily coaching that they get from Mickey Joseph and Joe Brady, and Recruiting great players. I mean, Jamar's a great player, a great talent. But I think that's a combination. Yeah, Coach, uh, you, you said a lot of times this year that, you know, someone at some point is going to be able to stop your offense. But you know, against Alabama, you get back to that 40-plus mark for the first time in about three games. Just what was emphasized throughout that, those two weeks of preparation? Uh, I'll just tell you, it's confidence. We got them, Coach. I passed by the office. How we doing, fellas? We got them, Coach. <laughs> okay. Take the quarterback. They had him. They did a good job. And obviously, we had two touchdowns we missed. You guys saw that. And uh, we had an overthrown ball that would have been a touchdown. Uh, we had a blitz that we didn't pick up, that Jefferson was wide open. So as we watched the film, we feel like we left some stuff on the table. And again, we played our best football for maybe a half. The second half, we didn't play our best football. We had to play for 60 minutes. Coach up top. Uh, Cade York answered the bell with two long kicks. What was the message to him after, and, and what was his preparation like? Yeah, good job. You know, uh, you know, Cade is, was struggling with a hip flexor, and uh, you know he'd go through some weeks without kicking and try to kick in the game, but he's healthy now. He's confident. Um, again, just tell him good job. Nothing too high, nothing too low. Coach uh, Clyde edwards Elair, I know what you said after the game. Uh, now that you've watched the film again, uh, what can you say about Clyde? Unbelievable. I don't know if I've seen a performance like that as a football player in a big game like that. I, I really don't. I don't know. I can't recall. I can recall Reggie Bush doing things uh, like that. I can call Warren Sapp dominating some some games, but that's right up there with it, man. It was far as a dominant game. And he said something like that, throw your heart on the line and your body will follow. Phenomenal sin. And that, that's him. I'll say it again, he's 6'4", 270 when he runs that football. Hey, Coach, right here. Uh, a number of your players just kind of went out for short stints against Alabama, but I guess now what is the overall health of the team after a big hey, game we, like We're that? about as healthy as we've been. Uh, Austin Deckless is going to be doubtful this week. Other than that, we'll be fine. Get to you right. Um, I do have an Ole Miss question. Two new coordinators this year with McIntyre and Rich yeah. Rod, just both obviously accomplished coaches. But yeah. how different are they with those two guys coordinating yeah. maybe than a year ago? They're totally different on both offense and defense. On offense, it's more of a quarterback run. Uh, Rich Rod is a great coach. It does a hurry up offense. There's not a lot of time in a lot of scrimmage. He's a very smart coach. Uh, Coach McIntyre is going totally to a 3-4 defense. They were a 4-3 defense before. So it's a total different scheme on both sides of the ball. If Deculus is out, do you, did you like what you saw from McGee at tackle? Is I think we're going to put uh, Bedard at right tackle, and we're going to experiment with McGee at left tackle and put uh, Ed at guard. Well, is Darryl Rosenthal healthy or available this week? Uh, Darryl Rosenthal will not be available this game. Ed, um, you know, you, you spoke about Chase on earlier. Um, Caleb on, is, is he? In what ways is he more than just a pass rusher for you yeah. guys? I mean, it seemed like he was dropping more in this well, game. And, and how does he? Yeah. In that? Yeah, well, that, that's the um, the job description of outside linebacker in our defense. Now, he's the bench linebacker. Now we want him rushing most of the time. 
but there's some times where we blitz him from the other side, and there's some certain coverages where he's got to drop, and he's athletic and can do it. So, and we're stunting him more. That's where he's making those tackles for losses. Was that kind of the stuff to save to confuse Tua a bit? Was that was that some of the stuff to save to confuse Tua a bit for this uh, game? I don't know. I don't know how much that confused him. I, I don't know if it did or not. To be honest with you, there's a lot of plays he didn't look confused. <laughs> Coach, were you proud of your team's composure in terms of penalties? There was kind of a cheap shot on one of your guys in the yeah. first half, and your yeah. guys didn't, you know, retaliate yeah. to that. I thought we handled the game. Uh, I thought, as a coaching staff, started with me, handled it a little bit better than Auburn. Auburn was a little bit overhyped. Wasn't going to overhype this game at all. Uh, we went in there with confidence. We said we're going to play with poise and confidence, and we're going to play discipline, play discipline football. Our whole – I didn't have to tell them this but more than one time. We're not giving them anything, nothing. I think they got the point. Coach, uh, Ole Miss leads the SEC in rushing offense, so just talk about your defensive game plan for this week. We, we have to play well, especially in the front seven. They're not as strong as they've been in the past. There's three of the receivers on NFL rosters today. Now, I'm sure they're good receivers, but they're not as strong as they were in the past. But they can run the football. And so we're going to have to play well in the box. We're going to have to tackle. This number 10 is a fast, fast running uh, quarterback. It's like a wildcat. So we have to play well in the box. That whole – take us to the, if you would, the sequence with Moss's catch of the one. Uh, mm -hmm. Were they telling you what they were looking at? And, and, yeah. did, and did you yeah. did you expect the rule would go that way, yeah. that he had been forced out to come back, come back in? But uh, – <laughs> <laughs> hey, when we got that call, so it's all day. But here, here's what happened. Obviously, you guys saw it, right? He was out of bounds. I don't know which foot it was out of bounds. And he came back, he put his foot in bounds and caught the ball. It was clearly in bounds. But the defender had a slight nudge and nudged him out of bounds. So if you get pushed out of bounds, you can come back and be the first one to catch the ball. And that was the ruling. And I, I want to say uh, this is the best officiating game that I've been a part of. I thought those guys did a tremendous job officiating this game. And I called Steve and I told him that. It's right. A, a follow-up on what Jock asked about the, the personal foul after the turnover. It was a similar play when you all played Wisconsin after a turnover, if you remember that up at Lambeau Field. Yeah. And an offensive lineman hit a guy late. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there was a suspension involved as well. Is, is that something where you submit that to the league office? I guess a lot of people might have been confused why the player was allowed to continue after that play. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something we'll talk about. Uh, we, haven't, really, we haven't talked about it. But then since you brought it up, we will talk about it. And uh, we got when we got that catch, uh, when that catch was not overturned, I wouldn't complain about anything else, man. <laughs> and, and I know uh, the NFL game is a different game, but will you use uh, the Saints loss yesterday to warn your team, you know, about the next two opponents? You know, here, here here's here's what I learned about this the games like this. Okay, not to speak that way, not to. Speak in terms that we're going to play the LSU standard performance and stay in, saying that without speaking the other way. So we're going to stay positive. I'm going to expect them to understand that we played our best for 30 minutes. We didn't play for 60 minutes. We have to improve, and I'm going to take that approach. Hey, guys. Hey, guys.